All right. So let's start off with uh, exothermic versus endothermic. All right, let's start off with endothermic. Bless you. All right, endothermics, endothermic reactions are reactions that what? A reaction that does what with energy? Do endothermic? Yes. Yeah, it takes it in. It's going to absorb energy. Right? Endothermic is absorbing heat or energy. Right? Uh, how do they feel? Cold, usually. Of course, that's, remember, cold, hot, and cold are relative terms. Because, uh, you know, we'll talk about it in just one second. But ultimately, does that make heat or energy a reactant or a product? In the reaction. Reactant, yeah. This heat is being absorbed. It goes in. All right. So an example, some examples of this would be like, Oh, boiling water. Boiling water is endothermic. Remember, cold, in quotations there, is a relative term. Right? Cold is a relative term. Hot and cold are relative terms. Boiling water, where's the heat going? Into the water, right? Heat is flowing into it. Heat is flowing into the system, into the reaction, right? Because I don't know about you guys, but when I boil water at home, right, if I got my water, if I'm boiling water at home, right, there it is. I'm going to use a Bunsen burner, boil my water. Right? Okay. Got the Bunsen burner going. Heat is flowing into the water, right? Heat. Going in. Right? So all this all this area around the beaker, this is all the surroundings. Okay, it's all the surroundings. And the stuff inside the beaker, that's the system. Right? Or the reaction, right? The stuff inside the beaker that we're observing is the system. Everything else around it is the surroundings. Okay? So as you're going to boil water and you're heating it up, heat is flowing from the surroundings into the system. That means it's absorbing heat. That's endothermic. Okay? Now, most of the time you think about endothermic reactions feeling cold because heat is flowing into them. Okay? You think about like maybe an ice pack or something like that, right? Um, you could think about um, why is my screen jumping all over the place today? Uh, you could talk about like uh, ice melting is also an example. Like every every phase change of water going in that direction where you're warming it up, that's endothermic. Okay, that process is endothermic, and the opposite would be Thermic, okay? Well, we got a little demo for you today. Call us the board freezer. I don't know how you could ever be bored in science class. Water, and put a little bit of water on this wood board that I have here. Okay? I have some ammonium thal. Cyanate, it's barium hydroxide. Put them together here. Mix them up a little bit. A chunk of ammonium calcinate, so I'm not sure. There we go. Now we're talking. I'll break it up into pieces. Thank you. 
There we go. Let that kind of do its thing. Oh yeah, smell it. Ammonium is being created there. Ammonia gas is being created, so the reaction is happening. Now, going well. Let's sit there for a second. So we can use a little music. <laughs> Oh yeah, Just let the reaction happen here. It's not boring at all. It's not boring. There we go. See, perfect. That's what we need. Yep. It's <laughs> perfect. Oh, we're running out of time. Sorry, we'll just I'll just play it again. Just play it. We'll play it one more time, and then we should be good. It actually might be ready now, but I'm gonna. I don't wanna. Give it a couple more minutes here. Well, not a couple more minutes. Once that song's over, we'll give it a go. 23 seconds. Okay. You guys having a good day so far? It's going all right? Yeah. All right. Here we go. You ready? Oh, look at that. Throws the beaker and the board together. That's how endothermic that reaction is. Throws the water. Sweet. Most of it. <laughs> okay, so that worked out great. There we go. How can you ever be bored in science class? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's not boring. All right. Okay, good? All right, endothermic. There we go. All right. It's the board freezer. Okay. Exothermic. Exothermic. So, just like above, they're just the opposite of one another, right? So, exothermic is when the system or the reaction right, releases heat or energy. So these typically will feel hot, right? You know your friends, like after you like knock down five J's in a row, you know your friends, you're like, I'm so hot, I'm exothermic. <laughs> no, no? I think I have to, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's an exothermic type of joke, right? All right, uh, feels hot, all that sort of stuff. It, uh, is, is the heat a reactant or a product? Product? Okay, so some examples. Right, some examples here would be uh, water condensing. Right, that stuff is going to, water condensing is, is an example of that. Water uh, freezing is exothermic. Okay, so in order for it to freeze, it's releasing heat to the surroundings. Okay. As it cools down, it's, it's releasing heat to the surroundings. Okay, you need to think about like combustion reactions like paper burning or something. Right? A bonfire, those are exothermic. You can feel the, the radiant heat being given off there. Okay? No demo for that one today. All right? 
So moving on from there, we're going to draw some energy diagrams. Are we good with system and surrounding? Any questions with system and surrounding? Okay, great. All right, energy diagrams. And these are actually their potential energy diagrams, right? Energy diagrams. <clears throat> so we're going to draw the first one here. Left-hand side is the energy. On the bottom, you got reaction progress. Okay. So as the reaction moves forward, you've got reactants, and then they go to products. That's not good. All right, so you got reactants and products here. Now, uh, we want to be able to label this guy, right? Okay, so we want to be able to label it. What is up here? There's a point up on the top. What's that? What's that state? Can you remember? Partway between the reactants and the products. Not equilibrium. I can't believe you. I can't even believe you said that. Starts with a T. No, not a type of that's, that's, even, that's, that's worse than equilibrium. <laughs> It's where you're going from one thing to another. Transition. There we go. Transition state. Yes. Hey. 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 I'm gonna keep that thought to myself. All right. Transition state is the. Uh, that's funny. It's flat out funny. I had a funny comment about it to myself. Uh, uh, I'm curious. So transition, maybe we'll come up later. I'll have another opportunity, but right now it wouldn't be funny anymore. Uh, so the transition state is just uh, somewhere between uh, the reactants and the products. All right, so uh, bonds are forming and breaking. At the simultaneously. Simultaneously. Okay. So bonds are forming and breaking simultaneously. All right, so we got that. We also, there's a couple other parts that of this we want to label, right? We've got to label from, from this point, from the reactants all the way up to the top of the transition state. All right, do you guys remember the, uh, what that's called? Yes, sir. Yeah, the activation energy. EA, or the energy of activation, either way. Energy of activation. Okay, so that's just the uh, amount <coughs> of energy needed for the reaction to occur. All right. Now, something to keep in mind, sometimes, like the reaction I just did there for the demo, when I mixed the barium hydroxide together with the ammonium uh, thial sol so thial cyanate, bless you, just the just them colliding with one another was enough energy for the reaction to happen. Okay, just them touching each other was enough energy for the reaction to happen. It got it up over the <clears throat> over the hill, and that was it. There was enough activation energy. However, like we have gasoline. If I take gas and I pour it all over the bench top and stuff, right? Do I have to worry? No. Okay, you might still want to worry, but I don't have to worry. Like oxygen is having contact, it's colliding with gasoline. It's not bursting in the flames, right? We need something else, though, to get it up over the hill. 
right? So for the energy evacuation, we got to provide a spark to give that a little extra bit, a uh, little extra bit of energy in order for the reaction to happen. And then once it's burning, it's just going to keep on burning. Because once you start the fire, it just keeps on going, right? It never stops. It's always been burning. It was burning before you get there, but <laughs> can't stop the fire, right? Put that one up. All right. So we can play it. Can't stop the fire. Right. What? We didn't start the fire. Yeah. Play it. Turn it up. Nineteen eighties. Good sir. It's coming, it's coming. You've <laughs> <laughs> heard this song before, right? All right, great. Okay. All right, so thank you, Miles. All right, so energy of activation. So once you get the enough energy going, okay, the reaction to happen. Sometimes that that uh, amount of energy need needed for the reaction to happen is necessary. Some reactions require a lot of energy, whether it's heating them up with a Bunsen burner, right, where you're cooking them for 1,500 degrees Celsius or whatever it might be, you've got to get them up over that energy of activation so then the bonds can form and break that need to to get you to the products, right? In some cases, it's really, uh, you know, when you're looking in, in, when you're in industry and you're trying to get these reactions to happen, sometimes things a process, a chemical process is not favorable because of all the energy you have to put in and what the payout is at the end, okay? So, and we can get into that a little bit more later, but uh, let's take a look at this. There is also, going from reactants to products, this little difference right here. You guys remember what that is? Delta H, yes. Right, delta H. We're going to talk about delta H a little bit more tomorrow. Delta H is enthalpy. Okay, and that is products minus reactants. Products minus reactants for delta H. It is typically expressed in kilojoules per mole. All right, kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules per mole. So. Right? We can measure that, so and that works out really well because we're looking at this in the same way. When we do, we're going to do some heat stoichiometry tomorrow, okay, with enthalpy and stuff. It's a per mole sort of value. So when we add in delta H to a reaction, okay, we can relate the amount of heat we're going to need, or if it's endothermic, or if it's exothermic, the amount of heat given off by the reaction, okay, because it's a we can have a mole ratio between it and the other substances in the balanced chemical equation. So you can calculate the amount of heat in kilojoules given off per mole of our substances that are in that reaction. Okay? We're going to do that more tomorrow. But it just gives us an idea just what is the what kind of reaction do we have here? Products minus reactants. Is that going to be a positive value or a negative value? It's going to be positive. Delta H is a positive number in this. So is this an endothermic reaction or an exothermic? Is heat going into the system or is heat leaving the system? It's going into. So which is this? Endo. Endothermic. Because it is a positive delta H value. Heat when into the system, you increase the amount of energy within the system. Okay, let's draw one more. Let's draw the exothermic where delta H is going to be negative, right, because the amount of reactants has less energy than the products. We'll still draw in the different pieces, right? 
the energy of activation is still from the amount of from the reactants to the top of the hill. Okay, and the delta H, the enthalpy value, is still from the difference between the reactants and the products. Okay. Okay, great. So that's it for the notes for today. Now we're going to do our baggie lab.